welcome to my channel, Andra Makes. I have a pattern review to share with you today. I'm super duper excited about it. It's the Ruby Overalls by Helen's Closet Patterns. Helen's Closet is one of my favorite indie pattern companies. I have made either four or five Ashton tops. That's one of my TNTs. I have a tutorial on my channel, how to make it, if you'd like to check it out. And I've made two pairs of Yantas. And as soon as I saw the Ruby overalls, I knew I had to have them and make them immediately. And I'm so excited to share my experience with you. I did make a couple changes that, or actually just did a couple things differently, I guess we should say. And I'll be sharing that with you. I'm going to go over the pattern details with you, showing you the pattern pieces, showing you the garment on a hanger up close, and I will insert pictures of me wearing it and also try it on for you. And this is also part of my Make 9 2022 challenge. If you aren't familiar, for my version of that challenge, I chose to make a pattern from each of the past nine decades, from the 1940s through present day. And I will put a playlist in the description box of everything I've made so far. And all I like now is the 60s and the 90s. And the one that I have made but I haven't filmed yet is from the 70s. But everything else is in the description box. And the Ruby overalls are the one I picked for 2020 through present day. In my plans video, I showed each pattern for each decade that I wanted to make, but I left the years 2020 through 2022 open because I wanted to wait and see if a new pattern came out in 2022 that I just had to have and it did and this is it. So this is part of my Make 9 challenge. And before I get into the details about the pattern, I'll show you the line drawings. You can make a crop, whoops, sorry about that. You can make a cropped version or a shorts version. And you also have the option of doing overalls hardware or just doing a strap. And I want you to pay close attention to these stitching lines right here that go across the front because I'm going to be talking about those and sharing something that I did a little differently. And now I'll go over the pattern details with you and say it with me. I gotta put my readers on for that. It says the ruby overalls are fun to wear and quick to sew. Ruby features an elasticated back that creates shaping at the waist while still being comfortable to sit and move around in. Two lengths are provided so you can make cropped pant ruby overalls or summer shorts. Ruby includes the option for overalls hardware buckles or you can simply sew the straps into the bib and step in and out. Anchored inseam pockets make Ruby both functional and fashionable. The pattern works well in many different types of fabric from flowy rayon chalet to structured denim. Make your dream overalls with Ruby. And the notions you'll need are thread and one meter or one yard of one and a half inch wide elastic some lightweight fusible interfacing, and if you choose to make the buckles straps, you'll need all that hardware, of course. And Helen has the difficulty rated as an advanced beginner. The size range is 0 to 34 US. And the sewing skills you'll learn are sewing inseam pockets, top stitching, inserting elastic, and installing overalls hardware if you choose to make that view. And the fabric recommendations are light to medium weight fabrics with no stretch. Linen, cotton, chambray, lawn, quilting cotton flannel, denim, hemp, canvas, rayon or viscose, and tinsel work well. Stiffer fabrics will have more structure and drapier fabrics will have more fluid movement. We recommend fabrics with a maximum weight of 10 ounce or 340 GSM due to the elastic in the back waist. And for the size range from a 0 to 34, that covers a bust of 31 to 60 inches, waist of 24 to 52 inches, and hips of 33 to 62 inches. Now about the sizing, Helen does say, we recommend that you choose a size based on your hip measurement and make that size for both waist and hip. You can adjust the fit at the waist by 
adjusting the elastic. And that came into play with me choosing my size and I'll share that with you as we go on. But the finished measurements are the front bib width is 7.3 to 14.5 inches, waist 34.4 to 63.4 inches, hips which is what she recommends you basing your size on, 35.6 to 64.5, and then she has the inseam length and the thigh and the body opening and all that. And the pattern has been drafted for someone who's 5'6". I am 5'11", so keep that in mind when I show you my garment when I'm wearing it because I did not make any adjustments to the pattern. I did do a shorter hem, and I will tell you about that when I show it to you. And then the fabric yardage you'll need, depending on the width of your fabric and the size you're making, goes anywhere from 3.3 yards to 4.7 yards. And that's for the pants. And then if you want to make the shorts, the fabric yardage requirements goes from 2 yards to 3.3 yards. Okay, back to the size I chose. When Helen introduced the pattern and was showing the pictures and everything on Instagram. She was modeling them and then Lori, I think, was modeling them also. I noticed that through the hip and across the tummy, it was a, I'm not going to say tight fitting, maybe slim fitting. It's not nearly as loose as the Yanta overalls. And I paid close attention to that because I like things that just skim over my hips and tummy. I don't want to have to be sucking my tummy in all the time. So I noticed that and I decided to size up two sizes just because of that. And I have made two pairs of the Yantas and I'll put in pictures right here. I made the shorts version and I made those in size 8. They fit fine, didn't need the side zip or anything. And then for the longer version of the Yantas, I sized up to a size 10 just to make them just a tad bit roomier. You can see that picture there. But for these, like I said, when I saw them on Helen and Laurie and noticed what a more slim fit they had, I decided to go up to the 12. And I'm so glad I did. And I'll talk about that as I show you the garment. So if you're unsure or know that you like a fit that just skims over things and doesn't touch anything, you might want to either make a muslin or at least size up one size. Okay, now I'm going to show you the pattern pieces. Here's the overalls front piece. And I'm really impressed with this. I'm always impressed with Helen's patterns and drafting because she has three different places that you could lengthen or shorten. One is right here at the shoulder and one is here. And then there's another one for length at the bottom. And then here's the back pattern piece. Same thing with the three different places to lengthen or shorten. And then there's the pocket bag. And this is really neat how this is constructed. The front facing, the back facing, the strap. And I'm really impressed with this also because she gives you the option of cutting it two different lengths. And the longer length is, she says, to cut it longer to begin with, and then you can always shorten it. And I did opt for that because, A, I'm tall, and B, it's always better to than it be too short to begin with, and then you have to cut another piece. So I did opt for that. And then the strap interfacing, the front facing, and the back facing. And there is a really special story about the fabric I used. A friend of mine contacted me probably a month ago, maybe, and her mother was an amazing seamstress. And her mother had passed away and had yards and yards and yards and yards of garment fabric. And my friend contacted me and asked if I would like to have it. I told her I would be honored. So I have received so many yards of gorgeous fabric that belonged to my friend's mother. Like I said, I'm so honored to have it. I treasure it and I want to use it and honor it. And I asked my friend if she knew the rough time frame of when the fabric 
could be from and she said anywhere from the 60s to the 80s and you know I love me some vintage so that made it even more special but I have a huge gigantic tub full of fabric from those years and you'll be seeing those in my makes in the future but the one I chose for the overalls is this fabric and I need your help determining what type fabric it is I'm not sure but it, this is the fabric I had left over this isn't my jumpsuit but it is that not amazing? I'm thinking 80s. What do you think? But it's really drapey and it has a slight sheen to it. And then here's what the selvage looks like. And when the fabric frays, it's this red kind of silky type stuff. Let me know what you think this is. But... I absolutely love it and am honored to make something with it. So now I'm going to show you my overalls. Here they are in that amazing fabric. And I want to show you, it did not even occur to me to even try or attempt to match the stripes for the straps. Did not occur to me at all. Was not even in my brain whatsoever. And I made the entire overalls, and then when I tried them on, I noticed that I could have matched the stripes to begin with. But without even trying, it sort of matched right there, which is so cool. Nowhere near over here. And then on the back, this matched right here. But I thought that was so neat. Without even thinking about it or trying, it matched a little bit, but... Here are my overalls. There's the pockets. And I'll show you the entire thing when I try it on, of course, and you'll see it in the pictures. But here is the elastic in the back. Okay, remember when I told you at the beginning to, on the line drawings, there were two lines of stitching across the front? Notice mine does not have that. Let me sit back down so I can... Uh, talk to you when I explain that, but the reason the bottom stitching line is there is to attach the facing to the overalls. Let me turn this inside out and show you. Okay, there it is. It's inside out. This is the facing. These are the pockets. And the bottom row of the stitching that showed in the line drawings, you top stitch the facing and the pockets and the front of the bib to attach the facing to the bib. And it's like that in the back also, but you can't tell because the elastic is in there. But that's what the bottom row of stitching is. And then the top row of stitching is in case you want to put the elastic all the way around. But if you don't want to put the elastic all the way around, you either have to have only one row of stitching on the bottom to hold the facing down to the overalls or you have two lines of stitching in the front. I did do that to begin with because I was following the instructions and here's what it looks like. You can see the two lines of stitching that's in the front and they're just sort of randomly out there and I wasn't crazy about that and even though my fabric is busy it doesn't show as much, but keep that in mind if you use a solid fabric because I think it may show up more. So I ended up unpicking both those rows of stitches and then I just hand sewed the facing to the pockets on the inside. And as you can see there, there's the front with those stitches removed. So keep that in mind if you want to do that also. So that was one of the changes I made and Helen also suggests in the pattern to top stitch the seam, the center seam down the front and back of the overalls. I did not do that. I normally don't do that in patterns and then the hem only did half an inch for the hem allowance because I didn't want it to be as cropped. I wanted it to be more ankle length. So those are the things I did differently. I didn't do the two lines of stitching across the front of the bib and I didn't do the top stitching and then I did just a half inch hem. And there's one more thing that I did differently. The length of the elastic that was recommended for the size 12, 
I cut that initially and put it in, but it was still too, I don't want to say close fitting, but it was closer fitting that I wanted. So I ended up cutting a piece of elastic that was four inches longer than the recommended length for the size 12 I made. So keep that in mind also. It all depends on what type fit you like. If you like things closer to the body, then I would recommend doing the pattern as is. But if not, you might want to play around with some of those measurements. So now I'm going to go try these on for you, but in the meantime, here are some pictures of me wearing it. Okay, I'm back, I have it on for you. I'm wearing it with my Galaxy T, and this is a Modal Modal fabric, so it's pretty thin. And like I mentioned earlier, the straps, when I'm wearing this, are just a tad bit long, but it's okay because I'd rather have them like that to be able to wear different thicknesses of tops underneath it. So here it is on. There are the pockets, and then here's the back. You can see the waistband there elastic. And now I'll get up on the steps so you can see the entire thing. Here it is. I love it so much. I love the wide legs. How it's dressier looking than conventional overalls. And here's the back. I really love it a lot. So let me know what you think about my ruby overalls. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!